And so Uranus is saying, we got to switch this up. We can't keep using what we're using. We got to change things. We got to have a new value. And here comes, here comes Uranus saying, solar powered, battery operated, electrical. And that's what right. Mercury and Gemini is definitely going to be. Things speed up. And it's information. When we talked about the sign of Gemini, remember, since Mercury rules Gemini, all those keywords that we discussed, yeah. But let's click on Mercury and Gemini real quick here. Gemini, you love conversation and information. You are a fast talker who likes to collect and network knowledge and data. You enjoy books, letters, magazines, the media, computers, and anything else that helps you learn and communicate. This is Mars in Cancer. 10 degrees is how you read this. 10 degrees and 30 minutes. And this being the planet Mars. So the planet Mars, if you look, there's a lot of sextiles, right? A lot of sextiles and semi-sextiles. We see Mars in Cancer. Cancer is a cardinal sign. So if we take a look, we see Mars at 10, sextiling Mercury, right? Because it's 30 degrees away. And then we go another 30 degrees, right? Another 30 degrees. You've got the moon at 9 degrees in Taurus because this was 30. So this is 60. But we also have Uranus there. They're within two degrees, right? Nine, 10, 11. And this is at 1030. Mars sextiling the moon and Uranus. So what that means is, again, sextiles means they add some ease. Yeah. Right. So we've got Mars squaring Chiron. And a square means uncomfortable because it's a challenge. So you see the square right there. It's 90 degrees away. Again, this is wounds about my body. This is typically the appearance. Chiron in Aries, your sense of being has been violated in some way. And you may fear asserting yourself. You may also overcompensate by attempting to be the first at everything. Again, because this is Aries. Okay. Physically, you may suffer a head wound. You may become a pioneer in a way which will be of service to humanity. Now, because Aries also is all about your appearance, but definitely wounds to the head. And I'm also going to mention here that the sign of Aries squaring the sign of Mars, Mars is the ruler of the sign of Aries. So even though this is a square, there is a mutual reception or mutual receptivity going on. There's a communication. Usually a square is, there. it's like oil and water, right? It's very complicated. They don't get along. There's a lot of friction. This particular square, because of the sign, because it's in Aries, and because it's being squared by Mars, which is the ruler of Aries, there's likely going to be something beneficial that will come from this uncomfortableness. Mars is the warrior. Mars was born with weapons. Okay, so Mars typically in your life is the individual or individuals that are carrying weapons. This doesn't mean just knives, but any weapon. If it's a soldier, soldiers can walk around with guns. So many times Mars can represent an authority figure with a weapon. That would be police officers. But typically because it's the military, like a lot of people who have police members in the family or who are officers in their family or people who've been in the military, Mars was very significant in their chart. So we've been hearing so much about the elevation of the abuse of indiv by individuals who can carry weapons. Mars is out of bounds to like May 28th. There's been a ruling we've been expecting to hear about that recent case. When you've got Mercury opposing the south node, you're going to likely hear something because the ruler, the judge, is this sign. What is, what is Mars doing with Uranus? It's a sextile. Hopefully, we'll hear something that we like, that the public will be happy with. And what do we see? The moon, which represents, on a large scale, it does represent the public. I'm liking that. I'm keeping my fingers crossed, right? Mercury actually goes retrograde May 29th, May 30th, depending upon where you live in the world. There's Mercury, 24 degrees, 43 minutes. We'll call it Mercury retrograding at 25 degrees. If it's at 25 degrees, you see that Mercury, the sisters were talking. They were heavy conversations because they were together. They were matching degrees. They were on top of one another. 27th, they were having a conversation and then Mercury went retrograde a day or two later. All the way backwards to 16 degrees of Gemini. So what we're going to dissect is what was going on when Mercury went into retrograde. Now, when a planet is a about to go retrograde, it slows down. You know, think about your car moving forward, you're driving along. And when you got to go in reverse, what do you first have to do? 
You have to stop the vehicle and then go backwards. It's the same understanding with the planets. So when Mercury is standing still, you're going to get information, a lot of information, more information than usual, a whole buttload. It's like a download comes through. And what is Mercury aspecting? What, who's talking to Mercury is what we're going to look at. Mercury squaring Neptune. But it's the days before it gets to that 24 mark. So we're talking May 19th. You've got Mercury squaring Neptune. Now Mercury is oxygen, communication, air, it's the lungs. So people who have asthma, this would be a time where the, the allergies might be on 10 at that time because Neptune can complicate the air because Neptune represents water. May 28th, May 29th, that Chiron is now at 12 degrees in Aries. Aries is good news. Why? 60 degrees away. Chiron in Aries, 12 degrees. Saturn in Aquarius, 13 degrees. This is going to be a nice sextile. Yes. What do you see? The numbers for Saturn are in red. In red. That means we had Saturn beginning its retrograde days before Mercury's retrograde. What happens when Saturn goes retrograde? Just like Mercury or any of the other planets, days before its retrograde, days before it moves backwards, it stands still. So when a planet stands still, it becomes stronger. This is the sign of Aquarius. This is the groups. This is people, but people in large groups. This is friends, right? When you go and you congregate, and there's a whole bunch of you. That's this sign, Aquarius. This is the sign of humanity. And Saturn represents rules, rules for the people, but not just rules for the people, but rules for when you're within groups of people. So this is what we'll be hearing about. It's sextiling Chiron, Chiron and Aries. It looks like there's something beneficial about our body and wounds to our body. So when we say wounds, honestly, this sextile, this kind of speaks more to me about Mars energy. This speaks more about Mars and the wounds that we've been witnessing, right? This is people. This is the public. We have been hearing about these wounds. They've been front page. They've been the headlines, the wounds from those with weapons who are allowed to carry weapons to people. And this Chiron is wounds to the body because of our appearance is the sun at 8 degrees and 46 minutes, it will get to 13 degrees. It's already starting to trine Saturn here. So remember, it's a trine, which means it adds ease. This is about people in power. This is about Venus, which is our values. This is information. This is the news. News about what we value. We're going to be talking about, we're going to be hearing about it. Absolutely social media. This, whenever Mercury is squaring Neptune and Venus is involved, remember around the 19th, just be careful whenever Venus is squaring Neptune, because Neptune is illusion and delusion. It's not necessarily that someone's trying to fool you. Sometimes if it's too good to be true, it is. And that's because Mercury may be impulsive because Venus likes to bend and buy things. If you're surfing on the net, right? And Venus is money and I like fine clothes and jewelry and you know, whatever it is you're looking at online, Mercury squaring Neptune. So just be, be aware of that. Venus and Gemini, let's click on that real quick. You're curious and flirtatious. Enjoy intellectual relationships with exchanges of ideas. Communicating within a relationship is going to be important to you. You can be restless and sometimes you're going to get bored and you may have many money making schemes. There's conversations happening, but we're building something and we're building something that has sustaining energy. It's got Saturn involved and Saturn is all about, I set up the rules but I don't set up the rules just for the sake of having rules. I set up the rules for our long-term good. Saturn is all about building for the long-term, building something that is going to last. Saturn in Aquarius is trying to look out for the people. I need order, and we have to establish some sort of order so we can make it through this. Saturn is not our enemy. It never feels good because it's that teacher that says you can and can't do this, and you have to learn this. It doesn't feel good while we're going through it, but once you've achieved it, once you've gone through it, Saturn rewards. Saturn is a builder, building for the, the stability and the health and the vitality of the future 